everyone who so has joined i am dr jyoti yadav a fertility specialist obstetrician and gynecologist with an experience of more than 15 years now so for today we are here for discussing the topic which is known as a very common technique called hysteroscopy and what we are discussing today is the hysteroscopic instruments we'll know little bit about each and every instrument and then go ahead with the lecture so priya i would request you to move the slide to the first one so what basically a hysteroscope is hysteroscope is an endoluminal endoscope that can be used as an aid to visualize the uterine cavity or to direct the performance of variety of intrauterine procedures basically hysteroscope is a scope so it can be uh, like if it is a laparoscope it is again a scope so it's an endoluminal endoscope only both the types either it is laparoscope or a hysteroscope next one so what basically are the in instruments in hysteroscopic procedures whether it is a diagnostic hysteroscopy or an operative hysteroscopy what all we need to know and what all we have is a resectoscope then we need a camera to visualize then we need to, uh, along with the camera we need a light source then we need a histromat we need a unipolar high frequency endosurgical generator with an automatically controlled output and acoustic control by these all things we we come up with a common unit by which we can do any kind of a surgery through hysteroscope or we can do a diagnostic hysteroscopy where we just have a visualization of the uterine cavity or any kind of the uterine anomaly now when we talk about a hysteroscope it can be a rigid hysteroscope and there are like different diameters if it is a 7 mm hysteroscope which is equipped with two channels two channels are required one is for basically distension media because without distending the uterine cavity you cannot visualize anything and the second port is for the instrument to put in like a probe or catheter or anything where we want to take our instrument for biopsy so we need to put forceps to take out the biopsy so one port is for distension media and one port is for the instruments to operate on then the procedures which can are usually done with the help of the hysteroscope is adhesion adhesiolysis we say then we resect the thin septa which are present we can remove a small polyp which is present we can take a guided biopsy from anywhere in the uterine cavity we want to take and a very simple procedure we are doing nowadays is removal of the missed thread of a multi load next when we talk about we'll now cover each and every instrument one by one when we talk about the resectoscope you can have a look of the resectoscope which is visible as a image there so there are 90% all the hysteroscopic surgeries are performed with the help of a resectoscope now resectoscope has the 20 inch uh, 26 french resectoscope with ancillary instrument it has a provision for connection to histromat connection to electrosurgical generator there are like different kind of the um, knobs present over the uh, resectoscope there are the different connections by which we put in the uh, media distension media we put in the camera and by the distension media will dilate the cavity to increase the option available to the surgeon in case we want to remove anything like a myoma present there or we want to put an instrument to resect a polyp or to resect the septum present next so have a look of the resectoscope it is like this now coming to a surgery when we talk about we cannot put a, any instrument like hysteroscope uh, without giving sedation or anesthesia without like relaxing a patient we are not going to put anything inside so in case of anesthesia what all options we have is a local anesthesia then we can even give a paracervical block we can give even a epidural block or we can have the general anesthesia now the type of anesthesia depends on the time duration of the surgery we take if it is a minor thing we take want to take out a biopsy just a, a minutes procedure then we can have the epidural block or we can have the paracervical block but if we want to have a surgical resection of myomas or any surgery which will take a little prolonged time then we need a complete relaxation of the patient and then the choice of anesthesia becomes a general anesthesia 
and then you can have the patient relax and you can very well operate happily on the patient otherwise you will not be able to put the scope or you will not be able to handle the patient for another one hour or 45 minutes the time duration which you are going to take for the surgery now coming to the what next is being needed i talked about the distension media without distending the uterine cavity there is no chance of watching anything inside so the most important thing to have the visualization of the uterine cavity we need to distend the cavity first so for distension when hysteroscope was initially invented it was invented in 1969 somewhere around that so the first media at that time what which was used was carbon dioxide which has now been obsolete and we are not at all using that media for distension now the media of choice at present for distension is the glycine other media just for a knowledge sake you can have the dextran you can have a saline you can have a sorbitol or mannitol for the distension purpose but nowadays what we are doing is the glycine distension and then we start operating on the cavity and the different procedures are done depending upon the distension media so for knowledge or for take home message it is the glycine which is the preferred media at present with us <coughs> next please <clears throat> now coming after knowing the type of anesthesia after knowing the choice of the distension media what else is being needed is a resectoscope then we need the accessory instruments now what are the indication coming to that point the various indication for doing a hysteroscope why do we need to think of a hysteroscope when a patient visits us in a opd so there are like different conditions where hysteroscope has proven to be one of the choice investigation purpose as well as it is one of the easiest way to remove the different pathologies of the endometrial cavity or we can say the uterus now what are the different indication we can do a endometrial ablation with the help of a hysteroscope there are different surgeries which are performed for a uterine malformations like a septum resection there can be a uterus didelphus which can be removed which can be corrected with hysteroscope there are treatment with for like the adhesions which are present in the uterine cavity the they are very well procedure known as the adhesiolysis we are doing it nowadays with the even with the office hysteroscope then there is a extensive surgery known as the myomectomy there are myomas which are present on like called as the submucous myomas which can be removed easily with the help of a hysteroscope now when we want there is a blockage in the corneal end of the fallopian tube even for canalization of the fallopian tubes we can do it by the help of the hysteroscope and if there is some foreign body like a missed i told you in the initial uh, slide also if there is a missed thread of a copperty or a multilord if or any other kind of marina a mislocation in the uterine cavity or any other foreign body present inside the uterine cavity it can be very easily taken out with the help of a hysteroscope under our direct vision technique now what else can be done we can take out a biopsy we in case of a heavy menstrual period there is when we want to rule out after ruling out the malignancy hysteroscopy can easily be performed when the drugs are uh, like all we have tried and patient has become drug resistant then in case of thickened endometrium we have the pre operative or we say the pre operative thinning of endometrium after doing it with drugs there is a procedure of choice with therapeutic dnc we can have the better success rate with the help of a hysteroscope next next now again coming to the endometrial ablation how it is okay fine fine so when we talk about the various uterine malformations or various uterine anomalies there are different type of anomalies which are present and which can easily be corrected with the help of a hysteroscope it could be an arcuate uterus it can be a septum present as you can see it very well in the picture given below there is a clear cut septum which is present there can be like two cornus and the uterus is known as bicornuate uterus there can be a uterus didelphus 
So all these are the uterine malformation and they can easily be restricted. The septum can easily be restricted and there can be a very well defined, well defined uterine cavity after the surgery where we can easily have the procedures called as IVF or the patient can easily conceive with a one cavity. And if there is no correction within a bicornate uterus and there is a pregnancy in that corner, which is smaller, there are more chances of having a recurrent pregnancy losses. So before making the patient pregnant, you need to evaluate the uterine cavity well with the help of a hysteroscope. And if you see there is a septum or there is a corno, small corno along with the main cavity, you can very well resect it and make the uterine cavity as a one whole uterine cavity, which is healthy enough to have the conception. Now, when we have the septate uterus, we talk about so septate uterus present with a reproductive difficulty, it needs a corrective surgery. Like I told you, if there is a recurrent pregnancy loss because of that septum, so before making the patient pregnant, you need to reset that septum and have a clear-cut uterine cavity. Now, coming to the diagnosis. Now, there are two cavities. As you can see in the picture, there are diff two different cavities with a clear-cut division or Y-shaped cavity on HSG. HSG is a technique to know the uterine malformation, which is known as a hysterosalpingogram, where we inject a dye and we have a clear picture on X-ray picture of the uterine cavity if there is a like septum or like two different cavities. Then we perform with the help of a hysteroscope. We have the resection techniques and we make the cavity one. Next. Now, when we come to the septum resection, how it is being done, there are like different kind of like instruments what are being used. I'm talking about the instruments, not exactly the technique. So we have what we need for resection. It is very clear if we think like a common sense, we need a scissor to cut. So we have a semi-rigid scissors, perfect for the thin uterine septum as they produce the required pores and small enough to pass through the operating sheath of the hysteroscope and along cervical canal without any difficulty or risk. Blades can be opened with wide enough for resection and even a thick septum. So it's a very thin, fine scissor, which is very well introduced in the uterine cavity. And while inserting, when we are in the uterine cavity, we open up the scissor and we start resecting it. Now, there is a continuous flow irrigation which is being used. As you are cutting it down, there will be blood. So, if we need a, con we have a clear vision. So, the clear vision can only be obtained when we have a clear media or a clear visualization with the help of the distension media, which is a continuous flow of irrigation going on through that sheath which is present. And there is a vision clear if only there is no bleeding. Otherwise, when you are cutting, there will be whole blood and you will not be able to locate and you will not be able to go ahead. So resection is done till you visualize both the osteas in one plane. That is the concept of making a one uterine cavity. While you start dissecting, you will not know where to stop now. And by doing that resection, you may even enter into the myometrium and you can even harm the uterine myometrium by making a different kind of a cavity altogether and even a perforation, which is a complication of doing a hysteroscopy by an unskilled person. Now coming to the resectoscope, so you, you need a knife and that knife is known as the Collins knife. The cutting range, cutting current with that knife is 30 to 40 watt per second then you have argon laser laser beam with the glass fibers of 0.6 micron diameter septum vaporized as a result of fibers contacting the target tissue so there is a clear steam burn or cut there these are the different techniques by laser by knife next now coming again to this the goal of the septum resection is uh, what we want out of dissecting or like cutting down the septum, we want a smooth uterine cavity. That is the target of doing the resection of the septum. Now, the resection is to be stopped at the level of ostia. As I told you, when you visualize both the ostia in one plane, that means you have done a complete resection. If you do beyond that, you will harm the myometrium. If you go uh, lesser than that, there will not be a smooth one uterine cavity. 
Now coming to the cautery near the ostia is to be avoided as it can obliterate the ostia and again the patient will end up in infertility. So the problem remains the same. Initially it was because of septum and now it will be because of the blockage of the ostia. Now the preoperative treatment, what we do in, uh, these days is we uh, like downgrade the patient with the help of the drugs called GNRH or Denazol for a better vision and there is a, like a depression or a constriction and then after giving a particular course of the, these tablets or injections we proceed with the operative procedure and sometimes even after doing the surgery we again put the patient on these kind of uh, GNRH. Now if there is a uterocervical septum the complete resection with inclusion of the cervical part is mandatory. Now follow up of the patient is done after two months with the help of HSG or again by the visualization under hysteroscope. HSG will give you again a clear cut idea of the cavity and if you are still uh, want to make sure have a clear vision under a scope by hysteroscopy. Now there is a full term pregnancy rate that is 70 to 80 percent of the patient even have the normal delivery they will not land up into the cesarean section and patient goes till term that is called nine months of pregnancy after resecting the septum and making a good uterine cavity. Next. So this is like two pictures of the uterine resection, how it is being uh, taken on the camera. So you can uh, very well see this. This is like uh, the picture is showing the two different cavities and the different uh, pictures are there. Now coming to the correction of the another thing which is an arcuate uterus. So when we take a patient of infertility for IVF, we need to have all the corrections done for any kind of uterine malformation. So and this is another kind of a uterine malformation which is being corrected with hysteroscope. Now the measurement can be done with the help of a sonohistrography where we can uh, like have a picture clear. Then there are measurements which is taken in term of the fundal myometrium thickness second is called as the coronal myometrial thickness now the incision how it is being done how it is being calculated this is the mathematical formula which is like if the fundal myometrial thickness is more than 11 mm or the fundal myometrial thickness minus the coronal myometrial thickness is more than 5 mm then it is known as to be the incomplete uh, septum resection now the meta-analysis of the studies, there are like improving results in the subsequent IVF cycles. There is relative risk of uh, relative risk of getting abortion is less if we correct these arcuate uterus. Next. Now coming to a broader or the biggest surgery, I would say is the myomectomy. Now by approaching the, the fibromas which are there lying inside the uterine cavity or we say hanging from the roof of the uterus in the uh, cavity. Those fibromas can be removed with the help of a hysteroscope. So these are known as uh, some mucous myomas and some mucous myomas incidence is 5.5 to 16.6 percent of all, all fibroids come into the fall into the category of some mucous myomas. Now some mucous myomas they contribute to infertility even uh, there are like some serous fibroids, there can be some mucus uh, fibroids. So some mucus fibroids are as they are in the uterine cavity, they will have the obliteration of the cavity and these are the fibroids which hamper the fertility or again the thing which come up is the patient is having the recurrent pregnancy losses because of these fibromas lying inside the cavity and they are occupying the space of the baby. Now by Removing these fibromas, again the fertility index increases and there is a more chance patients lens up with a nine month pregnancy and a normal delivery rate. Now as per the European Society of Hysteroscopy, these fibromas are divided into different types. We take type 0 as completely within the cavity, type 1 is extending less than 50% into the myometrium, type 2 extends more than 50% within the myometrium. Other indications are AUB and infertility. Next. Now these are again some of the pictures how it is being done with the help of a loop which is we have a called as the resectoscope loop and we start like taking up out the myomas in different slices as uh, this loop rotates and the whole of the chunk is being removed.
now the coming to little bit about the surgical technique of uh, like myoma the most important thing before uh, like thinking hysteroscopy in your mind you should have a clear mindset how to select a patient because your success rate will Will depend on the choice of patient how you are selecting your patient so the selection of patient becomes the key point in the success of your hysteroscopy now coming to the selection of case in 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 terms of myomas if the myoma is within the uterine cavity there can be pedunculated or it can have a broad base how what type of myoma exactly it is will depend on uh, will decide your success now coming to the myomas with a partial intramural development endocavitary component more than 50% angle protru angle of protrusion between myoma and uterine wall is less than 90% degree so that means the type of myoma its base will decide your technique of removal the base um, the thickness of the base and the extension of the myoma will uh, decide your success rate now coming to the operative hysteroscope working element with the electrosurgical instrument there is a thermal loop or the vaporizing electrode and the mechanical instruments there are cold loops or intrauterine morselators devices which can be attached and the fibro fibromas are easily removed with the help of the morselator in different different bits and bytes now now coming to the monopolar electrode they require non conducting distension media like glycine 1.5% there can be bipolar electrodes which can be used with the saline distension media even so here when we are using the bipolar electrodes saline is being used as a distension media cold loops they are used mechanically to enucleate the intramural portion of the myoma these are the loops as i told you we just scoop out the myoma and it is being done in different different portion now coming to the excision of only the intracavitatory component of the fibroid we do a pre operative again the gnrh therapy with the submucous fibroid of more than 2 cm we give a course of gnrh we wait for some time we attempt the surgery and maybe after surgery we put the patient again on gnrh next now what are the different challenges while having the myomas resection through hysteroscope if it is a very big submucous myoma now the Thoro preparation, pre-operative evaluation with mapping of the fibroid by transvaginal sonography. Then, before putting a, going for the operative hysteroscopy, you need to perform an office hysteroscopy to prevent the incomplete resection and complications during the procedure when you are in the operation theater. Now, complete excision may be done in two-step procedures for large submucous myomas after four weeks to resect the intracavitatory. migration of the fibroid it can even be done in two settings next now uh, what are the surgical techniques being used in case of the large fibroids it can be a one step procedure it can be uh, the techniques are like given different different names it can be like lasmers technique there is is known as a technique known as a litas technique so first resect the intracavitatory portion of the, the the different different techniques have the different kind of the surgical procedures now first resect the intracavitatory portion of the fibroid by using the slicing method then using the cold loop mechanically intramural portion of the fibroid is being resected by enucleating and blunt dissection is done enucleation is followed by excision and then resection of the intramural component of the fibroid this is called as we are done with the surgery in one step now this technique which is known as litas technique we take an elliptical incision given at the junction of the endometrium and its reflection on the uterine wall till the cleavage zone of fibroid is being reached now connecting bridges between the fibroid and the surrounding tissue is being slowly resected and in this way we resect out the whole fibroid and then there can be hydro massage which is another technique there can be manual massage next now this is the lesmus classification of the hysteroscopic operability now these are the different pictures are showing the different uh, scoring system of the fibroid we use a scoring system in fibroids so uh, de depending upon the position how much component of the myometrium they are occupying how much where is the position of the fibroid this table a table is being given and i don't think i'll go into the detail of this next 
now coming to you have operated on fibroid you have taken out a big large myoma with uh, like a scooping technique resecting dissecting everything now what is the post op care as i told you earlier gnrh is the drug of choice to downgrade the uterus sometimes the analogs are being continued for 2 3 months even post operatively now if the intramural portion of the fibroid was not fully removed at, at that pre uh, operative settings then the two step procedures can be planned after this two months break time and again the patient is taken up for surgery now the intra operative antibiotics are, are administered to all patients patient are discharged on the same day that's the beauty of hysteroscopy that patient can be discharged the same day from the hospital and it's called as a day care pre surgery now there are very few patients which require 24 hours observation for the fluid overload as you have distended the cavity there can be little discomforts now follow up hysteroscopy planned after 2 to 3 months now coming to a case a case 24 years female she does not have any live issues she is married for 6 months with a heavy menstrual bleeding with a history of laparotomy done in the past next how do we proceed with this patient there can be like uh, another there is a case called uh, known as like 50 years lady with a post menopausal increased endometrial thickness on ultrasound the investigation of choice this is the report of the ultrasound which is being given now this is a very important instrument in case of operative hysteroscopy is known as morsilator it can remove even a huge huge fibroids with the help of this instrument we can keep dissecting biting 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 and the whole fibroid is being chewed up next next now what are the hysteroscopic morsilators disadvantage there is no electrosurgery for hemostasis then uh, with the help of the morsilator the type 2 myomas are difficult to remove as they invade the myometrium the fundal pathology which are present on the fundus they are difficult to manage then the cost of this is too much and the instrument is actually costly now there is like uh, it has to be incorporated into the device which is little tough for doing then while doing the hysteroscopy coming to the next which is called as the complications if we do a surgery there is always a chance of complication and when we talk about complication <coughs> what all can be there so there can be a electrolyte abnormality as we are distending the patient uterine cavity with the help of the glycine or any other thing so there can be uh there can be a excessive bleeding there can be a incomplete resection there can be a need for a additional second sitting surgery there can be a increased operative time so these are the things which are being used or these are the complications which we need to take care of while performing any kind of hysteroscope when we know the complication we make ourselves ready for handling the complication complications are meant to happen by any surgical intervention or by any surgeon if we have not met with a complication we have not done enough so you don't have to worry for the complications the only thing which you need to learn is how to handle the complication next i told you that the, the hysteroscopy has proven very nicely as a choice of procedure in case of intrauterine adhesion intrauterine adhesion what can be the causes of intrauterine adhesion the most common cause in case of intrauterine adhesion is uh, tuberculosis in india as it is very common and it is one of the most commonest causes of for infertility so the intrauterine adhesion can be because of tuberculosis if there is any trauma by performing a dnc or any kind of pph so intrauterine adhesions can be formed and they are very well tackled or they are the procedure known as eosinophilic is being done with the help of hysteroscope then coming to the uh, there are like uh, intrauterine adhesions. you can see the pictures see this is such a honeycomb appearance of because of the adhesions 
have a look of the pictures. Now, the next indication comes is a retained fetal bone. There can be a iatrogenic secondary infertility caused by a residual intrauterine fetal bone after a mid trimester abortion, which is very rare. But yes, it is being seen. There can be some of the bones of the fetus which are very small or like broken down into pieces. They are found in the uterine cavity and they uh, like give a foreign body kind of appearance and they can very well be taken care by hysteroscopy. Next. This is a picture and uh, there are a number of patients which come up with the, this is the uh, copper tea which is present. This is we call as the missed thread of copper tea. So the copper tea is somewhere like strangulated or entangled in the uterine cavity and lost somewhere in the cavity. Then under vision, when we cannot find out on a direct visualization, we put a hysteroscope and take out the multiode. Next. You can see the tubercular endometritis, which is one of the commonest infection which is being seen. These are the petechia, which you can see different, different spots present in the cavity. This is how we do the cannulation of the ostia. See, we put a cannula in the uh, like uterine ostia and when we flush the media there, so the if there is like some adhesions present on the osteal part, they get opened with the help of the flow of that fluid which we pass into this. Next. Now intramural portion of the tube, initial one centimeter rectilinear, later it is 1.5 centimeter irregular and sometimes it is difficult to cannulate. So uh, what are the indications? There can be a tubal occlusion. As I told you, the ostia can be like a little bit uh, like dicey or it is like there are like few uh, adhesions present on the mouth of the ostia which can be opened up. Then there is like transfer of gametes or embryos in some ART procedures. Then placement of the intratubal devices for reversible sterilization. Next. Now, this is a technique called as the chromohistroscopy. There is a technique called chromoperturbation, which we are doing by laparoscopy. And this, as this is being done with the help of a hysteroscope, we called is, call this as a chromohistroscopy. There is a, a dye known as methylene blue, which is being injected. It is 5 ml of the, we take a dye, 5 ml, and then we put this dye and there is visualization of the ostia present. Now, the, there can be a focal staining. There can be a diffuse light blue staining present. And if there is a complete diffuse staining of the dye, we call as a normal histopath histopathology. And if it is like uh, not a diffuse and there is a dark, the, the focal dark staining, we call it as endometritis. Next. Now coming to one of the commonest procedure again, it is called as the hysteroscopic sterilization. So sterilization can be performed by open technique. Sterilization can be performed with the help of a laparoscope. Sterilization can be performed with the help of a hysteroscope. So we do her hysteroscopic placement of a radiopaque insert in the proximal part of the fallopian tube. Now the tissue in growth occurs through the insert creating the natural barrier device of length 3.85 centimeter and we uh, like uh, put it there and after doing this we can have the x-rays done and you can see the blockage present next now this is the like the last slide and coming to the conclusion the hysteroscope has given a wide choice for the patient and a very easy access to the surgeons to have the diagnostic techniques as well as the operative techniques doing this uh, instrument has proven to be one of the choicest instrument for a uh, IVF candidate where we can perform the easy accessible surgeries. It can be done either as an office hysteroscopy, there can be a operative, there can be therapeutic, there can be diagnostic. Next. And it has like it is one of the type of the uh, complete workup of the infertile patient.
thank you so much and by learning the hysteroscope and hysteroscopic techniques this is the practical aspect which will give a clear vision or the even the detailed uh, techniques of doing a surgical procedures or any kind of uh, therapeutic or a diagnostic technique by using this the practical things can be taught only in operation theater rest i think i have delivered it to you thank you so much for the patient hearing and i hope okay i do uh, like i do all my hysteroscopies under general anesthesia so first question was this what type of anesthesia do you suggest so i would suggest a general anesthesia because that's the complete anesthesia and patient is totally relaxed and if what if you uh, in in the initial stages when you start doing a hysteroscope you you cannot assure yourself that you will be finishing your surgery in next 5 minutes so your time taking of the surgery will be prolonged in your initial days and by general anesthesia your patient is totally relaxed you can be relaxed when the patient is relaxed and perform your surgery very well now the bleeding in uterine cavity is a risky risky situation what happened if there is a perforation if there is a perforation you need to put a scope from above and you need to repair the perforation that's like one of the complication then the third question distension media yes distension media can lead uh, uh, in electrolyte imbalance sometimes so the in case of any kind of electrolyte imbalance we need to keep the patient for observation otherwise there is no major risk with the distension media and we know that uh, this much is the time needed for the surgery and we need a complete uh, irrigation by the distension media so more or less they don't cause any problem uh there is an after after meth like after meth bleeding and fever and abdominal pain after hysteroscopy can you tell us something how to best take care in such post operative period i don't think a fever is the complication of hysteroscopy see you need to have the sterilized instruments if your ot if your instruments are not sterilized properly if you have not given a proper antibiotic cover to your patient then yes patient can land up into sepsis and patient will start showing the fever so you need to take care of your instrument you need to take care of your uh, operation theater you need to take care of your staff scrubbing and proper sterilization so the patient will not have fever and an antibiotic cover definitely now as you have a lot of experience what do you think is the best approach in regard of to anesthesia general local or regional i would say general why is the hysteroscopy scheduled always after first week of the menstrual period we have seen people scheduled it as such we do it maximum times we do it in mid cycle see you cannot perform a, a hysteroscopy when patient is menstruating so that one week is gone so you need to perform a hysteroscopy after um, the patient gets over with the her period time and so that is like called as the mid cycle hysteroscopy after that the endometrium will be thickened for the next cycle then again the your operative procedure will get hampered so we do it in the mid cycle so that patient does not bleed okay i think we are we i am finished with the questions thank you so much everybody if any other question is left you can like uh, put it in the chat chat box i would love to answer them